Hi, my name is Nidia. And my name is Julian. We'll be your guides in this program to introduce you to a career in machining technology. Laura's story is unique. She made some important choices that changed her life forever. And so can you. Machining technology, also known as precision manufacturing, is part of the manufacturing industry. Men have known for a long time the benefits of working in this field, but more and more women are finding out about the numerous career opportunities and the great advantages of working in manufacturing. So, what is machining technology anyway? Well, first of all, things produced by machines are all around us. Look around the room. How many things can you see that were made by machines? A TV, buttons on the TV, a remote control and the buttons on it too. I bet if we tried we could name some more. But the important thing is to know that machining technology made all these parts. So machining technology refers to the way or the process used to shape materials into various parts. Plastic is the material used to make most of the parts we named for this room. But think about your kitchen appliances, a car, or a playground. They have lots of parts made from some kind of metal. That's right, several materials like iron, steel, bronze, aluminum, and plastic are used to make parts for things that we all use every day. Imagine the thousands of different shapes and sizes of parts in the things all around us, such as ballpoint pens, cars, computers, and motorcycles. Machinist had a part in making all those parts for all those things. So as you can see, all manufacturing really depends on machining technology. It's the basis of all manufacturing. About 300 years ago, the Iron Age turned into the Machine Age and people began using sources of power other than human or animal strength. People realized that using the power of water or steam could replace the hard labor they were used to. But as machines got more powerful, new energy sources like oil were developed. People then made better machines to do the hard work. With these new energy sources, electric generators and diesel and gasoline engines were developed and became common. Since the 1950s, technology changed manufacturing forever. Many machines today are computer controlled. These machines can produce very large or very small parts with extreme accuracy to meet measurements in millionths of an inch. So, many of the parts and the things around us are manufactured and assembled by computer controlled processes. Over the years, the most progressive countries in the world have become wealthy because of a strong manufacturing base. Being able to make high quality products at the lowest price guarantees that products will sell well and get a good part of the sales in the world market. A strong manufacturing base is the reason many countries have enough jobs with wages that help workers maintain a good standard of living. Countries that don't use new technologies for manufacturing can't provide products as quickly as people want to buy them so their wealth cannot grow. As you can see, machining technology is important. It also offers a lot of exciting, challenging and high paying jobs. So let's take a look at some of the careers and jobs that are available in machining technology. Machining technology offers more than just interesting and high paying jobs. It opens the door to an extensive career pathway. A career pathway represents opportunity to grow and move up in the industry. So there are many jobs with benefits like health insurance and opportunities for promotions. However, people want quality products so machining technology does require skilled workers. The great thing is that there are three levels at which you can work in this exciting field. Entry level, semi-skilled, and skilled or professional. 
which means you can start with minimum skills and work yourself up to more skilled or professional positions. Entry-level positions require little or no training. Most companies, however, require a GED or high school diploma. Semi-skilled positions require some training, which could be a one- to two-year certificate program, an apprenticeship program, or even an associate's degree. Skilled jobs may require a college degree and or completion of a two- to four-year specialized training program. The most exciting thing about machining technology is that you can start working with little or no training and move your way up. The opportunities are endless. Now, let's take a look at what people in each one of those three levels do. The machine operator is one entry-level job in machining technology. That means it's a place for workers to get started without previous experience or training. Machine operators usually operate just one machine. They are responsible for starting and turning off the machine and checking the products the machine is making for quality. Machine operators usually start working for minimum wage, but it's a good way to get started in the industry. With a little bit of training, you can enter at a higher level and make a higher wage. Machinists are considered skilled workers and have attended some type of training program to learn specialized skills. There are different types of machinists. Some make metal parts, while others program and operate computerized machines that make the parts. Machinists that make the molds used to make the parts are called tool and die makers. Tool and die makers require more formal training that includes practical experience and several years of classroom instruction at a technical or community college and a lot of on-the-job training. At whatever level you start in machining technology, there is always room to improve your skills and move up in the career pathway. This program focuses on one possible career option, the machinist. Machinists have a very important job. They plan the steps that are needed to make each part and product. They determine the measurements of each part or product. And they set up the machine controls to make an accurate part. Machinists work in all kinds of factories. Some machinists program the computer commands and numerical controls so that machines can operate and produce parts automatically. These machinists are called numerical control machine operators or CNC machinists. Machinists are trained to use measuring instruments carefully and properly. They use very precise micrometers to measure very small distances. Special measuring gauges are used to measure the height of parts and the size of slots or holes in certain parts. Machinists have a lot of responsibility for finishing each part to meet exact size, shape, and weight standards. A lot to remember? You're right! Being a machinist requires a variety of basic skills and abilities. All these skills are taught in training programs and in on-the-job training. So, what would this training be like? Let's see! There are one-year certificate programs that teach machining technology at technical schools or community colleges. These programs teach the following basic skills needed to begin a career in this field. Inspecting and evaluating the quality of products, how to conduct tests to ensure proper function of equipment, how to analyze what is needed to create a design for a product, how to monitor gauges, dials, and other indicators that tell how a machine is functioning, how to use basic math to measure parts and figure the sizes and dimensions of parts, distinguish the qualities of the different types of materials like metals and plastics, and how to tell which material is best for making product parts, how to read blueprints to create the instructions for making and producing parts, basic computer skills to set up, operate, and maintain computer-controlled machines. 